Welcome to Evo 10 ECU Flash Training Part 4. In this video, we're going to take a look at our XML definition files. We need to know what the XML definition files represent so that we can properly edit them and work with them in our ECU Flash software. Without XML definitions, we couldn't open up a ROM and make any actual editing changes. Things like our field tables, our spark timing tables, our variable cam tables would all be missing. We're going to be finding it's in a very important part of ECU Flash to understand in case you need to make any kind of updates or editing changes in the background so that things display or disappear within your actual editing in the software. Now we're going to look at actually adding some custom XML code to bring in a RAX V3 data logging patch as well as some other features and functions that go along with that RAX feature. Um, I'm going to be showing you how to do that here as well as taking a look at some Tefra XML definition files and just understanding definitions in general and learning the file structure and how to edit them properly. So without further wait, let's jump into this video so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at working with XML definition files in conjunction with your ECU Flash software. Now XML definition files are going to be what we have in the background that are going to allow our ROM ID that we're working with, um, as we open it up and look at it, be able to see all of our tables that are defined. If we lack the XML definition code for a particular ROM ID, ECU Flash will not actually open up and allow us to edit anything. Now we ran into this in the second video when I did a read function on my 2011 MR. In that particular example, I had to go in and flash another file out of our course directory here, out of our Evo 10 course, to be able to have something in the car that I actually could start to edit and work with. Um, otherwise, the file that was in there previously, it was most likely some kind of a update from Mitsubishi that we don't have the XML definition for, and I couldn't edit anything. I essentially would have been blocked out from doing anything without that, that particular XML code. So we're gonna learn how this works and learn how to edit the XML definition files and learning about file structure within the XML documents so you understand how it's all going to work. It's actually relatively simple once you see what is going on. So we want to take, take a look kind of under the hood of what's going on here with ECU Flash. This is going to be nuts and bolts of how it works. So first thing we're going to do, um, I'm going to minimize my ECU Flash software. I'm going to jump into my folders here and we're going to move into our C drive. This is going to be where we find the ROM metadata. The ROM metadata here, if we take a look, we can see here the current ROM metadata. It's going to look at the information in the XML documents, which is found in the ROM metadata folder within your open ECU. We'll jump back in here into our open ECU uh, folder. It's, it's going to be our ECU flash folder. So we'll go to local disk C drive, double click. We're going to move here into program files x86, double click, move down here into open ECU. So we're going to move in here to ECU flash and then into ROM metadata then in here to Mitsubishi, and then finally under our Evo folder, this is where the XML documents are found, and we can see where it's going to be looking for here. So program files, x86, open ECU, ECU flash, ROM metadata, Mitsubishi, then Evo. So when I open up a file here within my ECU flash software, it checks against what's in the ROM metadata, and it's actually going to take a look at what the internal ID code is for the ROM that we're working with. So in this case, this particular ROM is a 55580006. That's the internal ID for this ROM. So it's going to be going right into that folder and looking up what kind of XML definition it has for this ROM. Now, if it doesn't have the XML definition, it's not going to display anything. It's going to allow you to have the file physically open in ECU Flash, but we can't really do anything with it, which is exactly what we ran into with that 2011 MR read in that second video um, in the training course. So what it's going to do here is look for this ROM ID I have open. So let's take a look in, in, in our file structure and see if we can find this to start going in and kind of reviewing things. So if we move down our file structure here, we're going to be looking, we can find, they're going to all be labeled here in order. So we want to look for, again, a 55580006, moving down here, and we're going to find here 5558, here we go, 006. So this is going to be the XML document that's defined. Now, one thing we want to take a look at here, if we look at the size, we can see the file above it here, the 55580005, that's going to be defined um, in an XML document. That's another ROM ID here. And we're going to find that this is going to be a 35 kilobyte file size, where this is going to be a one kilobyte. This is a dead giveaway. If you're looking at the actual XML definition file size, this is going to be a dead giveaway that we have what's called an inherent ROM type or the inherent ID type. So what that's going to mean 
is that we have our 5558005. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.